All right, gang, going into a new computer art tutorial, and what we're going to get into today is creating what we would call an impressionistic image or a photograph that has an impressionist style. So um, to get started on this, we'll want to choose an image of something to try and apply this effect to. So this could be any given just simple object or maybe an object or something that represents a moment that you enjoyed over break time or something like that. Um, I started with this fireplace image, so we're just going to go a uh, Google image search for whatever you'd like to apply this effect to. Right click it and copy that photo. I'll toggle back to home here in Pixlr E. Click create new. We'll call this uh, project impressionism after the art style developed by Monet, Claude Monet, impressionistic painter. So um, again, we're going to command V to paste this uh, picture in. There we go. Image comes in a little large. I'll have to resize it down. I'm going to just drag until I see the corner here and then pull and drag that corner down and then recenter my image here a bit. Keep doing that until it fits into my space here. All right, so a little bit shorter so that I can see the top and bottom. There we go. And then I'll just crop off the edges and we'll be ready to start. So hit that crop tool, move it on my sides here. And once I have the sides good, I'll hit apply. And all right, so let's get into how we would create this effect. So first off, um, we'll add a little blur to this layer. So we'll click on the image layer. Um, we'll start by adding some blur just to kind of uh, add that sense of like the change in the light or just kind of emphasizing a moment here. So um, if we want to blur, we could do that a few ways. We could take our blur sharpen smudge tool, take the blur and um, maybe raise your size up really high like I have I've put up to 500 or so here. And then with the strength, we could turn the strength up really high to 100. And when you click and drag, you'll see you can blur certain parts of your image. So if you want to blur out something like everything outside the edge, you could do that with that tool. The other thing you could do that we have seen before is go to filter and then we'll go to details and then down to uh, zoom blur is another way that you could apply this kind of effect too. Keeping kind of one area in the center of the zoom blur um, in order to kind of keep it in focus while blurring the rest of the area around it. So if I turn the amount down, you can see the center comes a little more into focus and then you can change the position of where the center of the zoom is um, by adjusting these sliders here as well. So if I wanted to make it lower, it is pretty much right in the center though, so I don't need to change these very much to get it to uh, be on the right point for me. All right, so now that I've got some kind of blur going on there, focus is really on the main subject, um, let's get into adjusting the colors a little bit. So we'll go to filter and go to effect library, and then we can choose from all kinds of filters in here. Um, I kind of like the colors ones. And so again, there's a bunch of different um, kind of combinations of filters that kind of give different tones and things to your project. Um, let's see here, maybe the ones that I was looking at were in this one. Nope, actually, I think they were artsy ones. Yeah, so here are the artsy ones. You really get some interesting color combinations and things like that, some a little extreme. Um, this was the one that I wanted to go with that kind of separates the colors and the spectrum a little bit. So it's kind of giving you more of that sense of like, looking through a prism almost and seeing these changes of colors. All right, and you can turn down the um, amount of the effect if you want. And again, you don't have to choose the exact uh, filters that I'm choosing. If you feel like using different ones, you might find other ones that work well too. So the other two things I'm gonna add here is let's go ahead and add in a element layer. So let's go to browse elements. We're gonna add a bokeh layer of light changing here. So you've got a whole bunch of element layers that you can add. Some of them have light effects, but I think most of those light ones are, are uh, premium ones. So the one that we were gonna look at was on that first frame there. Boca has different lights 
that we can layer in here and over your project as well. So find one that fits well with your uh, image that you've chosen. And then again, you can adjust the amount or the level of transparency that your image has. I'll try this one for something different here. And then uh, once you say close, you'll have that layer in there. Um, I think the last thing that I wanted to add was just a little darker edge, a shadow to this. Um, again, all these steps you don't necessarily have to follow. I want to go back to my image layer and go adjustment. And I wanted to add a vignette, which is actually a filter. So um, vignette and then turn that up a little bit. And what you can see is that kind of darkens the corners a little bit and it helps that bokeh layer stand out with the different light kind of uh, coming out in front of it. So that's pretty much it for this uh, assignment, making an impressionist image like the impressionist painters did, um, although we're using photos and creating a digital version here in Pixlr. So hope you guys have fun and get a little creative creating your own impressionist image.